hopefully I can keep this nice and quick. I'm just going to explain um, why you're going to have a very low chance of Doom ID Tech 6 actually uh, being bottlenecked by a CPU. And uh, I'm going to start here with the Doom 3 Xe's um, flow chart just to show you that uh, pretty much everything here is done by the CPU. The renderer is what bridges the gap between uh, the rest of your parts and the video card. So that's why it's labeled as an output and not monitor or screen isn't here. Output is where Doom physically ends with the renderer and for Doom 2016 that's either the Vulkan or the OpenGL APIs and those APIs will then send data onto the video card in terms of what resources to keep cached and what to do with them. Now the actual creator, one of the writers of the programming for Doom ID Tech 6, John Carm Carmack uh, was saying that they're looking at shipping Doom on two DVDs, which is going to be a maximum of 18 gigabytes, but they're generating hundreds of gigabytes of data to compress down. Um, I took this uh, as roughly 300 gig of data to compress down into 19, which is quite possible. However, you're looking at a very extreme level of compression. You're looking at compressing it down to roughly 1 17th to 1 20th of its um, original size. So when you're loading into the game, that's this part here, file system, zip file, and file. Predominantly zip file will be using 30 to 50 percent of the processor, your CPU, just to uh, unpack those compressed map and um, AI and animation um, datas to be loaded into either the VRAM on your video card or your physical um, SD RAM. And uh, that's why Doom is not going to require a large amount of CPU utilization once you've finished loading, is because uh, it's pre caching. You know, games like Skyrim or World of Warcraft, uh, this thread is um, running constantly because uh, these games try and do on the fly uh, decompressing and pre-caching or caching into the video RAM so that uh, they can provide a seemingly seamless um, map exploration experience. And uh, even if you go to Quake 3, an even older game engine, you can see that uh, unless you've got uh, bots or uh, a large amount of network clients, you're really not going to have much for the CPU to do, other than uh, obviously giving the renderer uh, data to send onto the video card. and. Uh, I have already got a quick snap map up here to show you exactly what I mean because the way uh, pre-caching works is you'll have your player spawn in here and he's supposed to step on this pressure plate which will open the door and the door will trigger an imp to spawn here, right? But because this imp is not spawned yet the CPU is not going to be processing um, hostility for it and uh, unit detection and idle animations and all that sort of stuff. So it's actually very efficient of a um, mechanic to have because it means you're not uh, wasting your computer's resources just by keeping track of what uh, monsters are doing on the complete opposite side of the map. But the problem is we have obviously um, that little delay where you can get the jump on him before he's ready to attack you. So sometimes they'll put the trigger back to here and um, by the time you walk all the way up here he will have had time to complete his spawn in animation and actually be able to attack you. So it's a balance. You know you can't have everything on the most efficient settings otherwise you get a very the stop and start non-fluid uh, gameplay uh, environment. 
So uh, I hope that helps if you're confused about what I mean when I say that generally you're not going to see a CPU bottleneck of video card in Doom 2016 and uh, the biggest reason for it is obviously uh, there's not very complex AI, like there's no bots and uh, there's no precaution going on and constant compressing and decompressing of uh, highly compressed files from hard drive or DVE. Now for consoles that will be different but I'm limiting this video purely to talking about obviously desktop uh, CPUs and set and video cards. So hope that helps.